righteousness is right side up living that invites the sunlight of God's favor and blessing upon your life. Unrighteousness is upside down behavior that is out of alignment with the truth of God that you've been sitting underneath for the last few days. It's behavior that is out of alignment with the truth of God to where you don't have to invite the enemy and come and make himself at home in your life. You just keep living upside down. And the environment created by upside down behavior is invitation enough. Listen to me. You can pray against the enemy till you're blue in the face. But if you and I leave passion and we do not walk in holiness, we do not live in a lifestyle that is in alignment with the truth of God, we will have wasted our breath in prayer. Paul says somebody's got to live right. It's flat out straight up holiness. holiness. It's a word that our, our grandmothers and our grandfathers back in the good old days when you went to church and you sat on a wooden pew. It's before some churches became so pre-seeker sensitive. I remember, y'all, I went, listen, I'm off track. Listen, I went to a church and they said we are a pre-seeker sensitive church and so we actually want to sort of uh, in a way they said dull down the actual literal name of Jesus just so we can get people in first then we will we will be more direct later on I said oh you have invited the wrong person <laughs> because there used to be a day and time where it was just black and white where there were fewer gray areas and tolerance yes come as you are but don't stay as you are yeah. holiness Brothers and sisters, I implore you by the mercies of God to walk in a manner worthy of this calling by which you have been called. That every bit of truth that you have received this weekend to align your lifestyle to it. To not determine that you will still dig your heels into the ground and live immorally or speak immorally or do the things, habits and lifestyles and choices and relationships that you know are outside of alignment with the truth of God. Turn the boat right side up so that you can invite the favor of God on your life. The Apostle Paul says righteousness is your breastplate. The Roman army in the first century, they had many pieces of armor, as you know, but the breastplate would have been one of the most critical. The reason why was because it obviously protected the most vital organ they had, their heart. The heart is the lifeline for your physical well-being. All of the blood flow, the vitality, the energy that you need to function in every level of your life comes from the vitality of your physical heart. What the physical heart is to the physical life your spiritual heart is to your spiritual life. All of the vitality, the energy that you need to be who God has created you to be, to have fervency in your prayer life, to follow him with passion and with fire, to read the Bible and it not just be ink on a page, but you hear his voice speaking to you, to have clear reception between you and the Holy Spirit. You need a vital spiritual heart. That's why if I were your enemy more than all else, I'd be after your heart. Because one shot to the spiritual heart will wipe you out. Your spiritual heart is comprised of four things. Your mind, the way you think. Your emotions, the way you feel. Your ambitions, what you purpose to do. And your conscience. Your conscience is not the voice of God, but your conscience is like this wiring that helps this microphone amplify my voice. The, the conscience is the microphone that the Holy Spirit uses to help you hear the voice of God. So if I were your enemy, I'd be after your heart because if I could get to your heart, that would mean I would have automatic access to your mind. Now I could tinker with your thinking. I'd have automatic access to your emotions. I can mess with the way you feel and make sure they're out of alignment with the truth of God. I can mess with your ambitions to where what you want to do is totally out of alignment with what God wants you to do. And more than all else, I'd want to make it sure I have a shot to your heart so that I can short circuit the wires between you and the Holy Spirit. Now you can't even hear God speak to you because you didn't have a breastplate on. The Apostle Paul says holiness is your breastplate. Holiness blocks you from a full frontal attack of the enemy. 
Holiness keeps the enemy at bay to where when he comes looking around for some people that he can infiltrate some upside down environments that he can fester in. He can't find that with me or with you because we've chosen right side up living. Aligning ourselves with the truth of God. Breastplates in place securing us against the schemes of the enemy. Holiness is your breastplate. I came to tell you to live right. I came to tell you not to just have heard all of this, to go home and live in accordance with it. Be ye holy. Not by your power, not by your might, but by the Spirit of God. There is no relationship you're in that if it is out of alignment with the truth of God that the Holy Spirit himself won't help you to sever so that you can walk in holiness. There is no lifestyle you are living that is too, uh, that you're too wound up in that you can't break free from no matter how you feel. In this moment, you can walk in holiness. There is no way you have been speaking, no addiction that you have, no habit that you have been festering in your life, that you have been harboring in your life that the Holy Spirit won't empower you to break free from so that you can walk underneath the banner, the favor of holiness in your life. Be ye holy. Y'all listen. Listen. Back in our grandmama and our grandparents' days, <laughs> great-grandparents, they wanted to honor God more than they wanted to impress people. See, the problem with Instagram and Twitter and social media, if there's a problem, y'all, the problem is we want this. We want to be impressive. And if I'm worried for our generation, <laughs> it is that we are impressive, but we don't have breastplates on. It is that we have the applause of people and our selfies are perfectly lit and we have a whole bunch of friends and a whole bunch of Instagram likes and people are following us and the enemy is thrilled because we have sacrificed holiness on the altar of impressing people. You got to live for the applause of heaven. You got to decide, I will not be politically correct before I will choose to be holy. I will not be impressive before I will choose to be holy. I may not be the, the, the person that everybody wants to be around. I may not be the most impressive, but what I will be is holy. Because a time is coming, y'all, where we are going to see our Savior face to face. And when we see him, he will not ask us how many Instagram followers we had. He will not ask us how many friends liked our post. He will not want to see the selfies that we took. When we see him face to face, he's going to ask us, did we do business with his son, Jesus Christ? And then, and then we're going to give an account. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm looking for well done. I want a well done. I want Jesus to look at me and say, you did the thing, girl. Not because they bought the books, they bought the Bible study, they saw the movie. No, you did the thing because you honored me. Whether with an audience of one or an audience of 30,000, you honored me. I came to tell you, brothers and sisters, walk with integrity. Be in the dark who you are in the light. Everything that your God has entrusted to you over these last few days, the enemy does not mind. He doesn't like, but he doesn't mind that you heard him. He doesn't mind you came here. What he minds is if you leave here and live by what you heard. Praise you, Father. If you're here, 
If you're in this room, stay standing. If you're in this room or one of the other arenas that are at home and you know you are living in a way that is out of alignment with the truth of God, your breastplate is not in place. You are open to full frontal attack by the enemy because you haven't girded yourself with holy living. And maybe you're in a situation where you've been trying to live right, but by your own strength and power, you just can't seem to pull it off. And you need the Holy Spirit to do what he does to set you free, to empower you, to rise up in victory, to step up to the plate and hit a home run for the kingdom of God. If you're tired of being shackled, you're tired of being breastplate-less, and you want to get that thing in place once and for all so you can walk out of here and have some victory, in Jesus' name. If you need victory and you need freedom, even while you're standing or wherever you are, listen, just raise your hand because we're going to pray right now that the chains will be broken. We're going to walk out of here free. There's going to be breastplates in place. I'm gonna pray for some accountability in your life. I'm going to pray that you would walk. Galatians 5.1 says it is for freedom that you've been set free. Therefore, stand firm and don't be subject again to any yoke of slavery. So, Lord, right now in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, I pray over every hand that is raised, every heart that is raised to you, and I pray right now in Jesus' name that if there is any assignment that the enemy has against these young brothers and these young sisters, I pray that that assignment would be canceled in Jesus' name. I pray that by your blood that has been shed on Calvary, you would loosen the, the assaults, the attack of the enemy on their lives, Father. And then I'm praying you would get some breastplates refitted over the lives of your people. Lord, I'm praying if there's any relationship that is holding my brothers and sisters back from living holy, you would loosen the, the bounds of that relationship on their life, Lord. I'm praying that you would taste, take the taste for the drug or the alcohol out of somebody's mouth in Jesus' name. I'm praying, Lord, that the habit would not be a habit that they have a taste for any longer, Father. I'm praying that you would replace their will with your will. Lord, I'm praying that you would change our want to so that our want to wants to do what you want it to do. <laughs> Change our want to, Father. Put your desires in our heart, Lord. Help us to walk in victory. Lord, I pray you would not let these people who have their hands raised in specific. God, I'm asking you would not let them walk in on holiness. I'm saying let your spirit so convict them, so challenge them that they cannot sleep well at night if they are out of alignment with you, Father. I am asking, Lord, that they can't eat well in the day. I'm asking that their relationships would be on dis-ease, Lord, that things just won't be right until they are in alignment with you. Get the breastplate on, Lord. Send the hound of heaven after them, Father, so that we have no choice but to walk in alignment with your word, Lord. That I'm praying that when the, the enemy comes looking for some folks to mess with, he won't see anybody that came to Passion 2018, uh-uh, because we got breastplates on. We are fortified by the Spirit of God to walk in holiness and strength and power in Jesus' name. Y'all remember, y'all remember in The Lion King? <laughs> Simba's messing with the hyenas and he's like, Row! and they're like, seriously? And he does it again, Row! and they're like, you gotta be kidding. He does it again, Row! and they're like, no, you'll never take us down. You're too weak, you're too small, you're too puny by yourself. He tries it one more time. He lets out his best roar, but it sounds like something big and giant, and it echoes off of the mountains nearby, and the enemy, enemy go running away, not because he was the roar, but because his daddy had come up behind him, and Mufasa had let out a great roar. The roar of the Father is behind you. Walk in victory in Jesus' name. Amen.